Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this morning I want to close our morning focus on our series. We've been walking through some principles of stewardship and reminding you that stewardship is not just about our tithing or our giving to the church, but it's about our attitude towards stuff. It's about our attitude towards time. It's about our attitude towards uh, tithing. It's about our attitude towards uh, the Bible. Uh, stewardship is every part of what we are. And, and this morning I want to just focus just very quickly on our stewardship of the cross. And I want to ask you today, if you thought much about the cross, now the cross is something that you get to, to be a steward of. How do you respond to it? How do you handle it? What do you do with it? How do you manage it? And that's what stewardship means. And our focus today is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. Rather familiar passage of Scripture. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning of verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is them that perish foolishness. But in us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, of the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block, and under the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jew and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. The base things of the world, the things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, hath God uh, God, these things which are not to bring to naught those things that are. For no flesh and glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, whom God has made into wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. I want just three very simple thoughts this morning of our stewardship of the cross. You know, it's the time of year where everyone thinks about the cross. You know, uh, there'll be news specials from some churches and there'll be all sorts of different things and everyone will be thinking about the, the week of passion and the crucifixion of our Lord and, and those last few days of his earthly pilgrimage prior to his death and his resurrection. And, and we'll be talking a lot and we'll be uh, focused a lot of our energies on the cross. And again, we don't think much about it, but when was the last time you saw a piece of jewelry with a, um, an electric chair on it? And when was the last time you saw a piece of jewelry, of jewelry with a firing squad on it? The cross was a tool of execution. The cross was a means of destruction. It was a means of pain. And yet today we glory in that. And I want to speak to you about our stewardship or our management of the cross. First off, I want you to understand based on the word of God, we preach the cross. We must preach the cross. Look at verse 18. Unto them that perish is foolishness. But it's the power of God to them which are saved. We need to focus on the thing that matters. We need to let them save that, that those can be saved that will believe. And we preach the cross so that people will believe and will come to Jesus. You know, I'm consistently amazed at the number of people who don't think they have a responsibility in telling others about Jesus. I want to remind you today that the greatest blessing you have in this world is to tell somebody that what Jesus did on the cross was sufficient to grant them eternal salvation if they would believe. Notice what the Bible says. Notice the text of Scripture there. Look at verse 18. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Verse 21 is the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. See, we believe with all our heart that we must preach the cross. Now, there are times where we'll preach a sermon on the cross. And, and most of our sermons, in some way, shape, or form, uh, Billy Graham said it best, I preach a lot of sermons, I only have one message. I'll be honest with you, I've been your pastor for 11 years. I preach a lot of sermons. I've only got one message. I told you that up front. I'm not real creative. I'm not real exciting. I'm nothing fancy. I'm nothing you're going to get real overjoyed about or underjoyed about, whatever that word would mean. You're not going to be real emotional about me, probably. I've got one message the cross. We focus on the cross. We put our attention towards the Easter offering on the cross because it is the cross that matters. I'm always encouraged the number of people who think, well, preaching is what preachers do. No, we all preach by our words, by our actions, by our statements, by our demeanor, by our lifestyle choices. Our words and our deeds is the message we preach. 
We must preach the cross. It is foolishness to them that perish. Can I tell you something? There's an awful lot of people in our world today that think that what you're doing this morning is foolish. There's an awful lot of people in our town and in our county and in our state and in our country and in our world today that think it's absolutely ridiculous that you get out of bed on a Sunday morning and you dress up and you come to church and, and you sit down and, and you sit through a Bible study with some guy who, who uh, loves the Lord, is all excited about teaching the Bible and, and your kids are excited because their teachers are teaching the Bible stories and, and man, they think that's just weird. And then you sit in a service like this and choir prepares and diligently works to present a message in song and we sing together. Sing together? What's this? It's not the national anthem at the ballpark. What are people singing together. Where, where does that happen? And then somebody yells at you for 35 minutes. Now, why does that make a lick of sense? It's foolishness to those that choose not to believe. There are a lot of people in our world today that just choose not to believe. Notice how he says very clearly, it is the preaching of the crosses. Them that perish, it's foolish. But to them which are saved, it is the power of God. Wow. Verse 21, for after that the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, yet it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them which believe. And all that we do, we must preach the cross. We must preach the cross. I want to tell you something. I, I'm not apologize for it. I'll not back up doing it. I want you to know I've got one message. It's on our podium. We believe the Word of God tells us we must take the cross to the world. That's our emblem. All that we do is about the cross. Well, I'll tell you something. If we had a different style of worship facility, we'd probably have a cross mounted on the wall behind me. We don't want volleyballs damaging it and stuff. We have multi-purpose. We, we can't have all the stuff we'd like to have if it's a little more permanent maybe. But we preach the cross. We have one message. We must preach the cross. But notice, secondly, we must preach Christ crucified on the cross. Look at verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified. You know, it's rare that you find somebody who's never heard of Jesus or have never heard of the cross. But there's a vast misunderstanding as to why Jesus would dare go to the cross. You see, there's no way around it. The cross requires us to preach the crucifixion. Notice what he says, for the Jews uh, require it's a stumbling block, and for the Greeks it's foolishness. I can't tell you how many times people just stumble over the cross. You ever talk to somebody and say, well, you know, you've got a sin problem. You know what sin is? And they'll say, well, uh, well it sins when I do things I shouldn't do. And then you ask them, well, have you ever done anything you shouldn't do? Well, I've never murdered anybody. I've never, uh, you know, assaulted anybody. I, I've never even back-talked my mama. Wonderful. Have you ever told a lie? Did you ever steal an answer at school? Did you ever take something that wasn't yours? Did you ever covet something that wasn't yours? Did you ever lust after someone or something that wasn't yours? You're a sinner. And the Bible says that the wages of our sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And what happens is you and I owe a debt we cannot pay. We owe death. Our sin causes the need for death. You and I deserve to die for our sin. Oh, Brother Steve, that's so harsh. I'm a good person. Have you ever sinned? Do you ever steal an answer at school? Did you ever take something from your brother or sister? Did you ever have a thought that was impure? Did you ever tell a little white lie? Amazing how we quantify things, isn't it? Sin is sin. We must preach Christ crucified because without that we have no hope. Notice verses 24 and 25. But then which are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I want you to understand something. You and I had a problem and we were hopeless and helpless, but God intervened. Now around, oh, I don't know, the end of November, we start getting excited about Christmas sales. Actually, we get excited about Christmas sales around the 1st of September, but that's ridiculous, isn't it? 
Everything turns and we think a lot about Christmas and we all get really excited and we all love the little nativities and we all love the, the Christmas stuff. And, and that's a great reminder that God interrupted history and that God visited mankind according to God's timetable. But the cross reminds us the penalty that man deserves. We must preach the crucifixion. We must preach Christ crucified. He died because you and I had a sin problem and there was no way we could in our own strength find salvation. But what Christ did on the cross affords us salvation. We can be redeemed. There's no other way. The crucifixion must have taken place. You know, every once in a while, I get really aggravated, and I, I repent of this. I, there's, a, there's a car that I see regularly, and, it, and please, if you have this on the back of your car, cover it up with a bumper sticker that says something more powerful. But the, the coexist bumper sticker. You know, all, can't we all just get, all religions are the same, aren't they? No. I want to tell you something. If there was an other way, God would have been the most horrific father to allow his son to die that death. How dare you say that Christ is one of many ways because if there was any other way, Jesus would not have had to go to the cross and been crucified. And friend, I want you to understand something. From the cross, Jesus declared he is once and for all the one and only way. We must preach Christ crucified. Friends, I'll tell you something. We don't worship the same God as, as the Allah. We don't worship the same God that the followers of Islam do or that the Muslims do, okay? Listen to me. You will never hear a follower of Allah say that Allah and Jehovah are the same. What you'll hear is some weak-kneed Christians say it because they're afraid to try and witness to the Muslims. I want you to understand something. There is nobody outside of Christianity trying to water down the gospel message as badly as many within Christianity who choose not to want to preach the cross. The Muslims, they don't talk anything about us being the same. Matter of fact, Islam, the word itself means peace through submission or peace through surrender. Or many argue peace through the sword. But you'll hear politicians go, oh, Islam means peace. Nah, peace with a price. All other religions require certain principles so that you become acceptable in the eyes of God. And Christianity is just the opposite. Christianity is Jesus going to the cross because you're unacceptable. And in your sin, he dies a death that you deserved so that you might be redeemed. Notice again, we must preach the cross, but we must preach Christ crucified. It's a stumbling block to many, and it's foolishness to others. And I'll tell you something, I've talked to people, and they'll tell you, oh, that's ridiculous. I'm a good person. I don't deserve death. The Bible says the wages of sin, singular, your sin, the wages, what you earn for it is death. And at the cross, Jesus paid the debt to redeem you, to take you that was unworthy and you that was unwilling and you that was worthless and make you a joint heir with him, a child of God. We preach Christ, we preach the cross, we preach the crucifixion. And if we find any glory, we find it alone in the cross of Christ. Look at verse 29. There is no flesh that should glory in his presence. He ought to tell you something. Everything God has is so much greater than anything we can imagine. And all of our strength and all of our goodness and all of our, our righteousness is just unequal. It's just worthless in the sight of God. But verse 30 tells us, Of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. I am redeemed. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Friend, I got good news for you today. We preach the cross. We preach Christ crucified. And in that and in that alone, we find our glory. We find our strength. We find our reason for being. We find all that we are. I got good news this morning. You don't have to stay a dirty, filthy, unregenerate sinner. I got good news for you this morning. You don't have to stay a good guy who just chooses to reject the cross. You don't have to be a good old boy who's just turned down the gospel. You can accept the wonderful gift of life through Christ. And then you'll have something in which you can rejoice and find glory. You can find him in the cross. 
Verse 30 reminds us, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. I got really good news for you today. Because we preach the cross and because we preach Christ crucified upon that cross, we can preach with clarity of heart and with singular of emotion that in Christ and through his gift at the cross, you can find redemption. Pastor, you just said that all of us are sinners. We've all sinned. That's right. Every single one of us are sinners. There's no way around that. All of us have sinned. We've fallen short, the Bible says, of the glory of God. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yet we can find our glory in Him when we find redemption and sanctification through Him. The question really begs us this morning is, will we accept the foolishness of this preaching that saves them that believe? Brother Steve, I, I don't like that concept. I don't like the idea that Jesus had to die for me. Well, he did. You are a sinner. And he offers you salvation through the horrible death at the cross. He died the death you deserved. And that in the power of his glorious resurrection, he offers you eternal life with him that only he truly deserves. And that's why it's called a gift. Gift. We, we have no right within our own flesh to glory. There's nothing about us that is, that is worthwhile. Now, I, oh, we're all good old boys. Uh, we're all nice people. We've never, we never smacked a waitress. We, we never kicked the dog. I mean, we're, we're good people, right? Well, the Bible says we're all sinners. Our problem is instead of seeing ourselves through the lens of what Jesus sees, we want to see ourselves through a world standard, and the world standard is foolishness. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of that sin is death. And here's the good news. We get to preach the cross. Some consider it foolishness. Others consider it a stumbling block. But to us who are saved, it is the power of God made manifest in our lives. We must preach the cross. We must preach Christ crucified. And we must find our glory, our reason for being, our hope only in the cross of Christ. Now this morning, some of you are here some of you are here by duress, you know, your, your mother-in-law talked you into coming, your, your, your girlfriend talked you into coming, your, your parents made you crawl out of bed, your, your wife's been nagging at you, your husband's been aggravating you. Some of you are here not by your choice, you're here because somebody else really encouraged you to come. And can I tell you something, I got really good news for you. They did you a tremendous favor. Because today you've heard the only message that matters. That you were in sin and you can be saved. That you are lost and you can believe and become a born again believer. You can go from death unto life today because of the cross. Paul says we preach cross. We preach Christ crucified. And we glory alone in the cross of Jesus. And this morning if you've never publicly acknowledge that Jesus died for you and that you've repented of your sin and that you've invited him into your heart to be your personal savior. In just a few moments, we extend what we call an invitation, a time of commitment, a time of affirmation where we invite you to respond to the cross. We invite you to come. Our staff's available. We've got other counselors who are trained to walk you through the word of God and explain to you how you can know for certain that you were in sin and now you're saved. For them that believe it is the power of God unto salvation. Folks, I want to encourage you today that it's the preaching of the cross that changes lives. It changes heart. It changes societies. But the question is, has it changed you? The crucified Christ on the cross, dying in your place, have you accepted his gift today? Some of you know for a fact you haven't. And some of you are wrestling over a decision even now. 
Some of you are going to say, you know, Brother Steve, maybe next time, maybe on Easter, maybe next year. I, listen, there's no guarantee of tomorrow. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to warn you. I'm encouraging you. I'm pleading with you. Today is the day of salvation. And in just a moment, when we bow our hearts together, I invite you to leave your seat. and We'll share with you from the Word of God how you can know for sure that Christ has offered you personal salvation. And through the repentance of sin, you can come to know Jesus as your personal Savior. And wouldn't it be great to leave this place experiencing the power of God and salvation? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me, please. There's no unnecessary movement. I'm going to ask you to, as calmly and as lovingly as you can, to bow your heads and be as still as possible. Our music team's coming, and in just a moment, we're going to begin our time of commitment, our time of invitation. Now, I'm just going to ask you this morning, do you know the power of the cross? Are you redeemed? Have you experienced that salvation that comes through knowing the Lord Jesus? Have you experienced the power of knowing that Christ crucified offers you everlasting life? Now, in just a moment, we're going to pray together, we're going to stand together, we're going to sing a familiar hymn. And this morning, if you've never publicly confessed Christ, I'm challenging you this morning to leave your seat. Come to our staff, I'll greet you at the front, whatever it takes this morning. More than anything else, we want you to know for sure that the power of the cross has changed you. We want you to come this morning. We want you to be a follower of the Lord Jesus. We want you to surrender your life through the confession of sin. We, we want you to surrender yourself for baptism. We want you to join our church family. We want whatever it takes for you to leave this place knowing that your glory is in Christ alone. Because we have but one message. Our lives reflect our stewardship of the cross. Christ crucified. The only thing we can glory in this morning. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that I ask that you'll do what only you can do right now in this moment. Father, there are folks today struggling with decisions. There are folks right now worried about what others will think. Father, I just pray that you would just take away that anxiety or take away that fear. And Father, right now there are folks worried about what, what it'll mean. The devil has so tricked them and so scared them. I just pray, Lord, that you take away that, that pain, that lie of the enemy. Father, this morning I'm just praying that you'll do what only you can do in the hearts and lives of people. Now, heads are bowed, eyes are closed, and I, I mean this. Listen, I want no unnecessary movement whatsoever. But this morning, if you're not 100% certain that you know the Lord Jesus, that you've experienced him through salvation he affords us through the cross, I'm going to ask you to look up me, make eye contact with me right now. Would you do that? Pastor, I'm not 100% certain that I know the Lord Jesus. Pastor, I'm not 100% certain. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to ask you, would you be the one this morning before God and this company to just leave your seat? Pastor, this morning I want to confess Jesus. I want the world to know that I believe that he died for me and that in him and him alone I'm finding salvation. In just a moment, we're going to stand together and we're going to begin to sing. And I want you to leave your seat. I want you to share with our staff, with me, that this decision you've made, that we glory in the cross. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that right now you'll do what only you can do. And we trust you and we glory in you alone. Let's stand together and sing. Whatever you need this morning.